Tensions in the Middle East are pushing oil prices uh, to around $70 a barrel. That's for the Brent crude, but just off a tad, but it's the 70 that's the important number. It's spiked after Saudi Arabia intercepted a missile attack from an Iranian-backed rebel in Yemen. Now, it comes on an historic day for the oil markets. Until now, the, the main blends have been Brent crude for the North Sea and then the West Texas Intermediate here in the United States. So you had Brent and West Texas, and between the two of them, there was pretty much, uh, that's the ones that you bought. There's competition on the horizon. Chinese oil futures began trading today in Shanghai. Antoine Health is the former chief oil analyst at the IEA, joins me now to talk about uh, this interesting development. Why did the Chinese decide that they ought to have the Shanghai blend uh. and quote it as a benchmark? Well, the Chinese have become the biggest importer of crude, but they've been relying on benchmarks and exchanges in the U.S. and, and Europe. So they wanted to bring it home to better price crude near the market, near where it's consumed. Right, so where is this crude that will follow the Shanghai blend coming from? Well, it's imported. From right? where? From everywhere. The Chinese are the biggest importer. They import from Russia, they import from uh, Africa, they import from the U.S., uh, they produce, they're a large producer, but they're a net importer. Right, now, if you're importing from the Gulf, or you're importing from Russia, you will more often than not use the, chi the, the, the Brent blend as, as being the, the benchmark price reference point. It could be the Brent, it could be the WTI, it could be the Oman-Dubai uh, mix of but, benchmark. So how are you going to get people to adopt the Shanghai blend. Right. Well, that's a big question. In terms of participation in the, in the exchange, right now, today, the, the launch was a huge success domestically. Right? The volume was huge. The price went up rapidly. The question is, will international market participants join in? Uh, it's an IMB-denominated contract, so that involves uh, foreign exchange risk. Which is denominated in IMB. Right. The moment that, I mean, you've just taught... <laughs> With respect, you've just put the kiss of death onto it, haven't you, in the sense that you're asking a blend on a market that is regulated by the Chinese, it just, who knows to what standard. It's denominated in a currency that floats in, in, in somewhat constrained circumstances. Why would anybody want to go with that? Well, it's a challenge, but it could be interesting because, again, because it's, a, it's going to be a very liquid market, probably. Um, it's majors in China participating, but also mom and pops, a little bit like in Japan, for product markets. Yeah. Let's talk about Russia now. Uh -huh. The ability of Russia to use gas as a geopolitical weapon, particularly over the Skripal incident, the attempted murder of the, of the spy in London. Could you see a scenario, I mean, we're coming out of winter now, so the, the, the same stranglehold doesn't exist, but can you see a scenario where Russia Gazprom would do what they've not done before, which is turn off the taps. Well, they've done it a little bit with Ukraine. Right, but, uh, I mean, right. that's exception. Yeah. I, I don't really see it. I could see them trying to pretend they might, but I, I think they depend on the exports, they depend on the money, and uh, it's not a tight enough market. There's plenty of gas, not quite as much of a glut as people you know, feared a year ago, two years ago. Uh, it's a tighter market than people expected. But it's not so tight that any kind of threat could uh, could really rock the market. And the prices that we're seeing at the moment, Brent at 70, WTI slightly less. Right. Uh, is that based on fundamentals at the moment or speculation? Because, you know, you have got obviously non-traditional fracking in the U.S., which has right. kept prices down. <clears throat> yeah. But you have these other factors, particularly Saudi Arabia, Yemen, pushing prices up. So what... How would you gauge that price? So it's the opposite uh, from the from the gas Russian gas situation. It's both fundamentals and speculation. The fundamental market has tightened dramatically. There's been a huge draw in inventories over the last six months or eight months, as a result partly of the OPEC uh, management, but also a very very robust demand. So in this context of tightening markets, concerns about the Middle East, concerns about the Iran uh, nuclear accord falling apart, uh, concerns about Venezuela uh, falling apart as a country are having a bigger impact on the market. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much indeed.